Hey, Richard and Greg. All right. Bit of an earlier start than usual for me. Uh, normally you don't get rolling until a bit later, but uh, yeah, when you get waking up early, sometimes you just got to go with it. Right, yeah. Uh, Travis, snow is coming for Western Alberta. Why not 30 centimeters of snow? Ooh, that'd be nice to have. And we've got someone from Guam. Uh, Edward. Hey, Rob. Good to see you. All right. Uh, anyway, I did a A1466 a couple of weeks ago, or whatever, and. Yeah, apparently it got down there and uh, the audio is no good, so... Uh, I'm pretty sure this one came in for a no backlight or no power situation. Anyway, so obviously I've done something wrong. Hopefully nothing too dramatic. I guess what makes this one a little perplexing is the fact that it would certainly probably... Well, look, I'll be honest, I, I didn't test the audio before shipping it out. I guess it's one of those sort of rush-type mistakes you make. Particularly if you say, repair the backlight, and you go, well, that's fixed and working now, I'm done. I can send it back, uh, rather than doing a complete overhaul check. We'll have a look to see what board this has got. If it's a 3437, we'll run MRI on it just to check. See what it thinks is going on. And we'll take it from there. I mean, obviously it's a little bit of embarrassment. A bit of egg on the face. When you send out something that's got an extra feature of something not working. Hey, Peter Crystal and 3X. Hey, Def Pump. Short to ground. <laughs> yeah, good name. Alright, it's a 3437. I'm just looking to see if there's anything impressively obvious that's wrong. Uh, no. Okay, that all looks good. Which is kind of distressing because. Yeah, I would have much rather it be something like a busted cable. <laughs> or I didn't plug in something right. I've got some more water droplets on there though. That's not from me. Let's see. Need my MRI. Just gotta get my mag safe. the heck uh, looks like we're going by battery because Dimwit Daniels here didn't connect up the MagSafe it's okay And see how this goes. Uh, it's another shop. Um, so they sent it to me for repair. I repaired it. At least I thought I repaired it. But it seems that there was an oversight somewhere and yeah, the audio is not working. Well, they didn't it just bong. Hey, Sonia. Uh, the mouse is still working, that's important. I almost swear it bonged. Hmm.
Uh, you got to be hard on yourself in this industry. If you're not hard enough on yourself, then someone else is going to get harder on you. Okay, so we've got precautions on our battery. Oh, right, it's just complaining because I didn't have the charge flex connected. That's fine, that's working. Uh, and it would appear this doesn't really do any audio testing anyway. Alright. But yeah, I could have sworn I heard it make the bong. Let's see if it does this time. I just gotta flip this up so that we don't see the customer's screen. No, not that. To message the person, see if. No dongs. Hmm. Where the heck's my Ubuntu? Oh, this is just a bit ridiculous. Alright, where's my... test drives? I mean, obviously, you want to be absolutely sure that you are doing the right thing in the sense of you are pulling it apart for the right reasons and not something else. No point stripping this thing down if it's some sort of bizarro... Yeah, you know, they got a black and white cat. And I've got an annoying dog barking. Yeah, uh, sure, no, I have, but, uh, just trying to sort of like, just drop in and say hello every day. Yeah, Greg, you're right, you need them on a big chain so they don't run away. I don't know if I've got anything on this drive, uh, it's a Toshiba drive. The two... What's this going to come up with? You're coming up with nothing. Why are you coming up? Yeah, okay. That drive is no good. I've got a few of these drives, but I never seem to remember what I'm doing with them. Mostly they're testers, and ever since the whole. Um, failure rate situations been coming up with them. I've been disinclined to put them into machines that I sell off or anything. Let's see if we have any better luck with this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take a walk downstairs. And oh wait, this is downstairs. I have to take a walk and, and go get a USB stick with something on it. Uh, 
Uh, Teresa, I've got it marked with a um, pen, but see the difference can be like in that one, that's just a case if it's got no operating system on it. Which basically puts me back in the situation where I am right now, where I need to go get a USB stick with something on it. Normally I keep one or two around here, but I seem to have been doing a bit of a purge lately. To my own detriment, it seems. <sighs> Seriously? Another flipping one? Come on. Bugger. Alright, looks like I'm just going to have to take a quick walk and let you all sit around watching the chair while I go and get my test boards, uh, test USB sticks. Can't believe I took them all out of here. I'll be back shortly. Alright, we've got a couple now. Might get somewhere. Hey, Jane Zimmy. Ah, oh, good day, Mr. Bailey. Is me. definitely a bit of a huh moment when I heard that this wasn't running on the audio. What I'll be curious to see is if it actually even picks up the audio hardware. Yeah, this sometimes takes a while. See what my other stuff is. Let's see. Uh Aha, -huh, finally. There we go. Hey, John Finn. Oh, the MRI tool. Hmm. Um, yeah, the problem I've got is. don't really have a safe place to put it right now. It should be around. Ask on Soren's... Uh, if you ask on Soren's Discord, someone there might have it. Okay, we are showing audio. It seems to be alive and well. 
So let's try some music. Uh, yeah, uh, I bet you I'm not going to have Wi Fi. Uh -huh, no Wi Fi. Great. Don't they usually have a sample file or something on here? Are you kidding me? All I want to do is test my audio and you guys are making it hard. Test speakers. Mm, definitely nothing there. Mm, definitely nothing there. Dummy output? What? Alright, that's a concern. See how it says dummy output? It's no good. What are you doing? Devices... Honestly, this whole uh, dumbing down of everything on Linux, Ubuntu and stuff like that is very frustrating. It's like don't um, don't minimize the information that's actually useful particularly you know, sure not everyone needs to look at it but don't minimize it so that no one can look at it uh, let's see LSPCI I'm just looking to see if I can see an audio controller No, it really doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see. D message. Grip. Minus I. Audio. Well, it sort of says that it's got the Intel high definition audio, but that's about it. No, right. okay, we're taking the board out. Obviously, something I've botched up somewhere, maybe. Light on in the jack. Um, well, if it was light on in the jack situation, you would expect you'd still have audio output. As in, your speakers should certainly. Oh no, they wouldn't work. But yeah, let's try let's try a different daughter board to start with. Oh, I think I know what this could actually be. That's right. Thank you for making the mention of the um, the light and the audio port because it made me realize that on these boards, the audio chip is on the on this daughter board here. And I just put that in the wrong tray. And one thing it will frequently suffer from is corrosion under the rubber boot. It usually manifests in a different way, but hey, no harm in it manifesting in this way. No, you want you there. So thank you for that. It reminded me. Uh, I don't think there'll be any, well, if there's corrosion under the chip, then yeah, there'll be a flux and boil probably. Or I'll just replace the daughter board. 
What am I doing? I'm really not with it. You see, obviously, I want to get a smoking gun to prove that something is particularly wrong. Just put this aside. What? I turned you on earlier and you're not on now. Okay, microscope will be with us shortly. Just seems to have decided to go back to sleep this morning on me. Could also be a bad flex. Guess we'll see. All right, we've got the microscope. So basically under this boot here is where the chip lies. And sometimes moisture comes down. But this one actually looks all right. Blast. Basically what happens is moisture comes down, it, it comes out through this hole and corrodes away these parts here. I've had it happen on a number of boards. But unfortunately on this one it looks quite pristine. Relatively speaking. Let's have a look at the Flex. Flex looks to be in perfectly good condition. No kinks, no liquid, no stabs, nothing. All right. Oops. So we'll try another one just out of testing. Try a complete replacement set. Okay, this is a Okay, you're good. What the heck? No wonder this one didn't work before. This is a Look at that. I bought this and I wasn't hundred percent sure it was working and now I see why. Some jock strappers knocked the parts clean off that. Bloody hell. And they've taken the pad out with it. Fantastic. It's one of those things where you buy it, it doesn't work, you can't absolutely prove it, so you sort of put it aside. Great. Now I'm going to have to find out what these parts are and fix that up. To be fair, these are about 40 bucks here in Australia. So it is somewhat worth repairing them, particularly if it is just a botch up like that. Well, I guess I better get another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's just run out of these. Uh, let's see where did I put them. Where did I put all my MacBook parts? Somebody cleaned up the room last night and put the parts in places that no one's looking. Oh, come on, Paul. <laughs> hey, from Florida. It would be hilarious if it was a software issue. Hilarious in that kind of I'm going to go on a stabbing free type, spree type situation, but uh, I have a feeling it's not. Yeah, you see this one here I've repaired.
supplement. Just get in. Speakers are unplugged. Now, if it was both, I mean, if it was just one, you would have had a valid point, but unfortunately it's both, so that doesn't count. Because that one's plugged and that one's plugged. But, yeah, I'm sure I've had or will have dumb events like that at some time. Let's get that cross flex. I'm not going to bother plugging that thing in. Uh, Greg, to be honest, I can't remember what it was in for before. I'll have to go back over my list. I really should print out the list and... Okay, if I boot... I would be very surprised if it is actually something other than the daughterboard because basically I said, you know, the audio chip's on there, so it's got to either be one of the connectors going off to there or the daughterboard. We'll find out quick enough. Man, I already had one copy this morning, but I'm really hankering for another one. You know, some days you get up and you have that first coffee and pff, it's gone and it flash and then you just really really get that yearning for another one okay it's set up dummy output still but then I don't know whether damn it This is frustrating. I need their password. Hopefully we'll get that soon enough. In the meantime, we'll see if the PCI list contains anything better. So we got... Okay, we do have here, we now have the Haswell audio controller, but I think that's an internal thing. Kind of curious why it's not input, sound effects, application. Great. It lists the Wi-Fi adapter in here, 
it's at the Broadcom BCM4360, but it says it doesn't know what the Wi-Fi is. It's the joy of not having the firmware for these things. Uh, not sure what to think of this now. Shut down. Uh, Travis, I think that was with the 1286 or something like that. Yeah, but we're at... I don't believe it's the 1466 model that does that. Yeah, this definitely doesn't have a glowing LED in it. I fixed one of them the other week. And you just have to do the resistor fix on it. Uh, no, I can't. And inspect that those connectors a bit better. See if there's anything busted up around here. That seems fine. Stray sortable. I thought I did have a MacOS on external, but I can't find it around. But yes, that would be the ideal option. You may just have to go and do that. Okay, yeah, this one came in for backlight issues. That's right, there, yeah, see the fuses. Still done. And we changed the LCD connector. See, so if I was going to put blame, I would have shoved it over to here. Uh, I know. If I get my, if I get my compiler machine, that will do the trick. Because yep. here I am again, risking my. Um, oh crap! Just like that. All right. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. Basically, this is my Flexboard View Compile Machine stick. And I generally don't like using it unless I have to. I guess we'll find out. Let's see how this goes. Oh boy, boring. Hey, four still in the sun. Ah, Travis, yeah, um, I don't think I... It takes me too long to make a coffee. Uh, Forcelin 20, how long have you been out of the field? I'm kind of curious because I was sort of out of this sort of thing for quite a while as well. And it was just because someone shoved a MacBook um, A1278 into my face repeatedly that I got started again. And that's when I started running into Lewis. Remove the J tape. Yeah, I don't think I need to go to that extent. It looks clean to me. And now I have to wonder what my password is. It's not that. Fantastic. Just what I always wanted. Forget my own doom password. Okay, thankfully I have remembered it, it seems. 
And yes, this is running Yosemite. I have to run Yosemite because I need to be able to build to an earlier version. Citrix, why have I even got Citrix here? Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll go straight into about this Mac. And we're going to that system report. I'm not sure if MVRAM could cause this, I'll be honest. Well, yeah. Okay, so we do, we've got the Sunflower 2 channel, whatever, whatever that means. I don't know what the Sunflower is. I should try and make it, make some noises. Play feedback when the volume is changed, okay? Hmm. Where do I get the feeling this sunflower thing is actually just a bogus device? Okay, we do have Wi-Fi, do we? Yes. Uh, we don't want to restore because it might reveal things that I want people to see. No, I definitely don't have any output. I'll check to see if headphones are doing anything. Headphones. Headphones require... Heads... Oh, for flip's sake, you're kidding me. Uh, I'll be back. Let's try some headphones on. Hopefully I don't blast my ears off today. Nothing. Alright, that's genuinely got me curious. Shut down.
Now let's take this board out and see what I might have missed. Though in fairness, it's more a case of... Uh, actually, no, I don't know what I'm talking about here. Just waiting for this to shut down properly. <sighs> well, the IO... Everything's been replaced, that's the trouble. The IO cable and the daughter board have been replaced. So now I'm... That's why I'm like, hmm, this is weird. So this is a 3437, I'm going to bring up the board view for it. Another lunatic driving past. Now there is a possibility that that daughter board is actually no good itself too. Again we come back to the whole dependency of having something that's a known good working board. Oh, that took ages to shut down. Okay. I didn't want to too aggressively shut it down because this is, like I said, my uh, compiler board uh, drive, so I don't want to botch it up by doing things like prematurely powering off while it's in the middle of doing things. Uh, let's get this battery out. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little perplexed now. The only thing I can think of is something is maybe signalling something to say... Well, we don't even have audio output. Um, and the amplifier should be on the daughter board too, shouldn't it? Again, something I have to check on the board view. Wife just got quoted 260 for a replacement remote transponder car key, 160 for the transponder. Time to learn how to do this myself. Ah, yeah, mm, they can be fun. So it's entirely possible there was just something that I've missed on this board when it came in for the repair. <sighs> Missing like my T8 Torx driver that should always be on my bench here and now all of a sudden it's not. Ah, there it is, it's on my bench but on the wrong side. This one's for the hinge screws. So I can pull away the Wi-Fi cables so that I don't damage them when I get this heatsink screw out. Because that happens unfortunately a little too often with these boards. What the heck? How the hell did that even get there? Let's 
fairly sure that stuff's not conductive. I think. It's just thermal paste, but no, we'll, we'll give it a look. Yeah, definitely no conductivity in that. I'll try that again. I saw it flicker after I took it out. Yeah, that's zero. And by zero, I mean open circuit. Still, that's a little weird that there was paste there. Just clear that up. Now it's going to suck if there was a hint somewhere on this board for what this audio issue is because it has been through the ultrasonic. Looks like the ultrasonic kind of didn't get that area a little bit. Very worst case scenario, I may just have to swap the board. I do have a couple of spares of these ones, so it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. Now I could use this as a compile board because uh, it's not like I need audio. Um, that's just a little tube, it's not a wire. Yeah, it's yeah, I did test the headphone jack, there was nothing coming out of that. And I looked in it and there's no light in it. Okay, we're going to now look for audio. See if there is anything pertaining to audio. Here we go, PCH audio, Jack, page 12. Uh, bring up the heavy keyboard. Oh, you did not just do that to me. There we go, 12, go. I'm guessing HDA is what it is. Oh yeah, there we go. It says audio in there. Uh, let's see. 13, 10, 11, 12. 13, 10, 13, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so you guys are just above the RAM by the crystal area, which, funnily enough, is not too far from where I was. Oh, not crystal. Just this. So that's these guys around here. Nothing looks suspicious or anything there. This is starting to unnerve me a little because it. Not to say it can't be PCH CPU related. That's going to suck. Let's see, have a look on the other side of the board at that point. Yep, right on the edge of the... Damn it. There's really not a lot else. So they're all supposed to be 33 ohms. I guess we'll test that. I don't have the highest hopes of finding that it's not right. Okay, bank of four. Nope, 32. Okay. 
33, whatever. That, and the one above it. Yep, all those resistors are just fine. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at the connector. This one up here, 9500. Finstack. And see. Speaker in, in and out. Audio power enable. Hmm. What drives you? Uh. This one's turning out to be more complicated than desired. Not like we get an option. So I'm going to plug this in, turn it on, see if it uh, gives me that audio power enable, see if I can get some other signals going on in there. Uh, let's see. Audio power enable. Where can I get access to that? Down the bottom here. Test pad by those two resistors. Okay, so this here. Make sure we switch to volts so I don't blow things up, specifically myself. Where am I going? Give me a ground point for damn sake. And we've got 3.3 .3 on audio power enable, so that's fine. I'm really out of my... We've also got this HDA sync and whatever stuff. Uh, so I was going to blame that cap, but that's a no stuff. Crapping heck. Okay, speaker amplifiers. Oh, this might actually give us something. U sixty four but you'd think the uh, you would think that the headphones would still work. Okay, sixty four ten Where are you? On the other side of course, naturally. That's you there. Well, we could have a shot at just replacing the speaker amp. Uh, that's a pretty sort of redneck way of doing it. Let's see if we get any idea of what the lines are doing. Okay. Let's see if we get any voltage up there. What are we looking for? Five volts going in. Uh, 
There's really not a lot else we can check, to be honest. Check on the other side of that zero M. Five volts, five volts. Yep. That all seems fine. Where the hell's Lewis when I need him? Yeah, Sappy's little brain. So, anyone want to drop some advice? Happy to hear it. I think that the the thing that com concerns me is the um, fact that it comes out saying things like Sunflower audio device. And it just doesn't seem like a legit thing. It seems to me more like a fallback dummy device. And so I'd be disinclined to think that it's the speaker amp. Especially too, I think there's probably should be another one, and that's probably on the I should probably find another one on here. Oh, uh, is it a bloody hell? Thanks, Lewis. What's his premiere about? Yeah, so there's our other speaker ramp there. Well, can someone complain to him in his chat that is need needed over here? Maybe I should go in and harass him. I doubt he'll respond in Discord, but let's see if I can get his attention. Let's see. Here we go. Time to abuse Lewis. See if I can get him on the stream. I've got enough capacity here to be able to do it. So, yeah, there won't be a problem in terms of me causing... Ah, come on. Where's your stream, Lewis? Where's your stream? He's not even showing up. Lewis. Premiering now, technical difficulties. What? Yeah, I see he's got no um, video there. I just saw that comment go past. I don't have headphones for the machine that I'm running, so I'm not going to be able to hear him. Actually, maybe I can run it on my iPhone. Yeah, let's see if I can get this. 
Am I missing audio voltage? Uh, let's see. Uh, I have five volts. Ah, oh, come on. Into Ah, this is fun. Okay, he's talking about audio voltage, but I don't know which one he's talking about. And he probably won't remember. The other thing is maybe the I2C lines. And they're just down here. I think these, yeah, these two down here. Yeah. But again, see, everything looks comparatively fine. <sighs> Oh, geez. Lewis still griping about having to eat durians. The guy whinges a lot. Okay, okay it might be this, the 5VO uh, alt audio LDO enable. But again, that's an enable signal. But we'll have a look. Again, all down in this area. Hey, Paul. Good to see you. Are you being a little less frequent these days, but I guess you know these streams can tend to drag on a bit. And you've got other things to do in your life. So yeah, I'm not really sure what uh, specific line he's talking about. Oh, here we go. No. Does Paul Daniels know how to find the board ID? Oh my god. Some people ask the interesting questions in life. Alright. I'm just going to have to keep looking and seeing if I can find what I'm after. I gotta say, it is nice having a sufficiently fast internet connection that I can get away with doing this. USB, not not USB. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what this old LDO thing is. Oh, in the end, it's a no stuff anyway, so that's kind of pointless. And I guess that's why it's marked as an alternate, because it doesn't even get used. I mean, yeah, we've got the JTAG, but that is pristine. There's no compelling reason for that to be removed. Ah, this is going to be one of those I have to dig type things. Okay, so audio power enable. We know we've got that good. Speaker amp shut down low. Okay, let's check that one. Obviously, we can't test it on the connector itself very easily because of the uh, flex that goes over the top but fortunately we do have that point there that we can use it on so we'll, which is just there the resistor on top so we'll plug it up again and have another shot so what's Lewis's stream about today anyway why is he premiering is that something special? Is he special? I'm gonna get... 
another um, yeah, I'm just going to try something different here I'm going to put this into my own chassis let's get this flex cable out oh the Rossman real estate diary right that's still going on. So like, hurry up, pick a place already. They wanted way too much. Which one was that? Was that with the demolition notice or the something else? Yeah, so this is a chassis that I'm pretty sure I've tested plenty of times before. We could have something like maybe a speaker's dead or... Oh no, is that keyboard backlight flex finally had its day? Yeah, it could be something dumb like that. Still doesn't explain the headphone lack of output there. But we'll just have to pick at it bit by bit, find out what's going on. Certainly frustrating, yeah, because obviously I'm not going to be getting any money for this job because it is a warranty. Kind of a warranty. I guess it's one of those things that you could debate whether it should or should not have been covered under the original repair. But for now, I'm going to state it is. Particularly that the person that sent it to me, the shop, they're a good, consistent, reliable person. Oh, the Penny House place. Have you checked the sound on another body? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Do you mean what I'm doing right now? Which is, you know, it's plugged into a new chassis. So this will be yet another different audio board, a uh, daughter board. And ah, oh crap! I've got no Wi-Fi. It's weird. Nothing's running. No, there should be Wi-Fi. Why isn't there Wi-Fi? So there's a bit of a delay there. Alright, we'll be picking up the Wi-Fi because I've disconnected the cable, so that makes at least sense. Did I install Valley test on this? Applications. I have. Uh, 
the valley test usually helps. Lewis talking smack. God damn, I don't know why that guy talks smack about my software. Yep. I see Lewis is gone, which means he could be heading this way. God, this is so slow. Sound. <laughs> Six frames per second. And it's really cooking up. Okay, we we definitely don't have a way. So there's definitely something on the main board that's going on. I guess my question is, what in the heck could it be? Now I have to start thinking in terms of the history of the device. So we replaced the screen and everything. Now I wonder, is there something on the screen area, screen connector area, that could potentially do this? The screen connector, that is. Yeah, the volume is fine. Yeah. So we cleaned up all this area here. This is where all the damage was. So I'm wondering, is there something that can, in this area, that pertains to audio in some way, that may have caused an issue? I mean, we've got, obviously, up here, but we've eliminated that sort of thing. So, uh, damn it, this is really annoying. It's really annoying because I hate not being able to just look at things and go, oh look, there's the fault. Call, call me lazy. Alright. Backlight. Ticon. Okay, so SMC zero on those, lead return. CD, aux channel. <laughs> Can't really see anything that would be related to it, other than the, maybe the SMC, but I don't think that's it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is maybe there's a they're using the common I uh, SMC bus. As far as I can see that's using SMC two, so that's a bit different again. Oh here we go. This might be what I was looking for before. 1v5 audio. Duh. Jeez, I missed that one. It was right there in my face. Okay, we can I... Again, that same area. Alright, let's get this out. That's probably the one that Lewis was talking about, and I was just running around blind. bad case if I was looking at it too closely. Yeah, we may have to get to the diode readings situation, as terrifying as that is. I don't think I've done a connected diode readings comparison in a long time. I think it's just, quite honestly, it's made me lazy, I guess.
Water damage success is a worth repair attempt. Nope. As soon as you get water damage iPhones, they're going to become a nightmare later. You flip that thing, it'll work for a few days, and then you're pretty much guaranteed the customer's going to come back at you two or three weeks later, and they're going to have lost all their precious baby photos because you flipped a phone. You have been duly warned. I mean, you can try, but I think a lot of us have gone through that process. Like, I've got probably a good dozen phones here that I could sell. There's no blooming way I'm going to sell them because I know it's going to just bite me in the ass later. Okay, what do we got? And please tell me that is actually the one that we want. Please, please, please. It should be that. Because that will be the solution. Yep. Ah, oh, damn it, we do have 1.5 volts. Well, that sucks. Oh, that really sucks. And it's steady too. Damn it. So we've got power enable, we've got audio power. This is starting to become one of those ones where I might just have to replace the board outright. And then I'll send this board off to Hairless Head Pool. Can't believe it. Come on, surely there's something I'm just missing. Everything seems to be centered around this area. So maybe there's something down here. What do you little paired inductors do? Little chart thing below the glue blob. Which, uh, okay, that's camera. Let's see. What are you talking about? There's this, which is a little diode. That looks pretty normal. Nothing under there. So I'm guessing that's what you mean. This little thing here. He's bringing me back to this connector potentially. But I genuinely cannot see any issues at all in there. Uh, let's test the pins. Just seeing if any of them have got any sort of give. Wait, that one there just moved. Doesn't make sense though, that one. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a mover. What are you? HDA sync. Pretty sure, no, no, I think that's a ground pin. Pretty sure that's just a generic ground pin. Hey Jacob. 
kind of curious that it's if that's a ground pin why are they just floating around like that but I do wonder though whether I actually caused that maybe I pushed too hard oh no there we go yep we've got our problem that's it there so we've got ground ground something ground something so ground ground something ground something HDA SDINO we found it would not have freaking well picked that what a pain in the butt so it would seem this connector has suffered some sort of abuse but I'm kind of curious as to how it must have been me anyway this will be an easy fix Interestingly, that might not have even shown up in diode mode because it would have, as I pushed down on it, it probably would have come up good. Uh, I better take my compile solid state stick out. Last thing I want to do is ruin that. I mean, I can rebuild the um, compile system, but. It is such a colossal pain to do so. I should probably put a wire on that as well. And I should probably check all the other pins. First I'll just put some solder down. The wire is simply going to be for reinforcement. It's not... Yeah, the solder blob itself will probably suffice. But the wire... Kind of like fibre reinforcement. Okay. Uh, if only Lewis was here. Just so I could rub it in his face, that's all. Yeah, there, there's so many subtle aspects of the build, the build system, that can be forgotten. And you either end up with a build that's not quite right or doesn't even work. And you waste so much time. That's broken too. Blimey heck, this whole connector has actually been reefed or something. Yeah. That, I'm kind of really curious about. We should be back, we should be back. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. When I went and checked on the router uh, status, it was showing that it had zero uptime, and I was like, what? Uh, anyway. So when I go back to the other side of the house, I'll have to go and find out what in the heck happened. Lewis broke it, quite likely. He's probably got some deal going on with my wife. As in, not what you're thinking, no. You probably 
plans how they're going to mess with my head. I'm probably being gaslighted. So I'm just reconnecting these pins. Let's see if anything floats up. I don't think they will at this end of the connector. It does seem to be all up at that top side. And that's a dodgy connection. Not enough heat. I, I'm not reflowing the whole connector, as in with a normal reflow, but I will... I am basically just going along and touching up all the pins. That was certainly one that, from a visual inspection, there was no way you were going to see that. These seem intact, so whatever the damage, the pull or the problem came from this top corner. Downside is this is going to need another ultrasonic. Oops, bit too much solder. Yeah, there's worse things in life. Beautiful. Uh, Jacob, we're actually having a nice day today. It's not too hot. A bit of overcast. Cool breeze. Slightly strong breeze, but still cool. Um, yeah, overall, good day. I think I will take the uh, prudent move and scrape back this one as well and put a wire in even though it doesn't seem to be disconnected I'm not really wanting to ship this back knowing that the other two broke and not doing this one it's been a little bit reluctant Yeah, if you if you come to Australia in summer, anything of sort of anything north of Sydney or even hell, even Sydney and Adelaide, uh, anything north of Tasmania, you really do want to protect yourself. Basically, the best thing to do if you want to come to Australia, come in the winter because we don't really have true winters. I mean, there are some areas in Australia that will get snow and cold weather, but as an overall trend, you got more chance of surviving in winter here than you have in summer. Ah, turn the board, Paul. Just uh, don't. Just don't visit Wolf Creek. You might not come back.
Alright. That's certainly looking better now. Is it true every insect... Well, obviously not every insect, but there are certainly enough things in Australia that, you know, you, you do have to be a little bit aware of what's what you're dealing with. You can't just stroll around willy-nilly and not expect to have some troubles. Drop pairs, yeah, you got to watch those things. Danger chickens, yep, dino chickens. Actually, dino chickens are probably one of the worst things you got to watch out for. Because you just don't expect it. You're like, oh, look at that, that's a really amazing dinosaur-looking chook. And next thing you know, you're picking up your picking up your guts from the ground. And you're like, ah, how did this happen? Yeah, that hasn't actually flowed back up onto that well enough. Well, I don't think Wolf Creek is just a big volcanic crater anyway. There we go. Alright, that looks more promising now. We'll put this back into my test chassis. Because if there is something still wrong with it, like maybe what if I've shorted something or whatever, at least it will take out my machine, my test chassis, rather than theirs. So I am still definitely a little perplexed as to how that damage occurred. That is not the sort of damage I would anticipate encountering with normal handling. So maybe there's a little more to the history of this machine than I know. But, you know at this point, I'm just glad that we found a definitive cause. There's nothing quite so frustrating as having something fixed but you don't exactly know why I mean it's bad enough with my software when that happens it's like well I fixed it it's working but I don't know how I fixed it so um, let's hope it just stays fixed <coughs> and it will stay fixed until I release it and then within minutes of releasing it people will be screaming eh, it doesn't work and by people I mean Lewis uh, let's boot this thing up Oh, the glorious sound of a bong. Uh, did you hear that? Did you hear the bong? i got to tell you, moose, they're pretty crazy creatures, those things. I did not realize how big those things were. They're massive. Florida is the Australia of the US. It's actually not too far off. Uh, uh, throw in Tex Texas as well. Some bird out there chirping away. It's annoying. Lovely. I also want to see now what it shows up as the actual audio device. Because remember, we had that sunflower bollocks, that dummy looking thing. I didn't believe it was real. So I'm kind of curious to see whether it actually is still listed as a sunflower device or whether it's um, more like what it should be, which is like Intel HDA something, something, something. Yes, that's more like it. You can actually see it's got proper information there. 
Interestingly, the manufacturer is still the same. So MA++ in Galas for cycling, 74. No idea. Oh, right, yep. Yeah. Okay, it says Soundflower. I'm an idiot. I thought it said Sunflower. But there's definitely more information there now, so... Soundflower, you idiot, Paul. Alright, we have fixed it. Shut down. Thank goodness for that. And best of all, I didn't get any money for this one. Like I said, I can't prove that it wasn't me that did that damage. I'll be very disinclined to think that I did cause that, but I'm not going to bother contesting it on this. This is going to be one of those cases where you, know, you just take it on the chin, so to speak. You've got the device fixed for the customer. The customer is going to be happy, the business customer. Um, there's no way of proving liability one way or another. So we'll just write it off as good business, so to speak. You know, maintain customer relations. Uh, because I know that this person will send me plenty more jobs. It's not worth... Um, it's not worth souring the relationship that we have over something like that. Yeah. So, for all they know, it uh, was done prior anyway. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is I probably should secure that somehow. I wonder if I can just wash this rather than ultrasonic it. Because it's not a massive area, so maybe I'll just wash that. Yeah, it'll cost me money, it'll cost me the job. Ah, uh, Jesus. Sorry. I uh, just got someone telling me they've got no money. And I just say to him, that's fine. Just bring me in when you do have money. So, I appreciate you at least being honest up front. Nothing like the sort of people that drop the jobs off at you uh, at the store and then when it's all done, that's when they tell you they don't have any money. It's like, yeah, that, that's great. Thank you so much. The little bird out my window with a sweet little tune. They're cute and all, but if anyone's seen Funny Farm, it does eventually get to the point where you do want to do what Chevy Chase does and toss the old cup of coffee out at him. But then again, I do love my coffee, so I guess I wouldn't do that. And realistically, I would not harm animals. Um, to give you an idea of the extent I go over these sort of things in terms of trying not to harm things, a few months ago I was um, in bed, heading off to sleep, and I felt something fly into my hair. It was a, um, what we call a wood roach. Or they're not like European cockroaches. They're just, they're sweeter little things. Anyway, it flew into my hair. And then before I knew it, it was crawling into my ear. And it got down into my ear canal and it started scratching at my eardrum. And I got to tell you, that is potentially the most terrifying, agonizing thing I've experienced in a long time. And... Yeah, so the ambulance was on its way and stuff like that. But fortunately, I remembered that all I needed to do really was put um, olive oil in my ear. So I managed to scramble over. To, this is like 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. Scramble over to my wife and tell her to get the olive oil from the kitchen and then pour it into my ear. And of course, it, the insect... The, the roach sort of scratched away for a little bit because, you know, it's fighting for its life. But eventually it, it did die, and thankfully it floated out of my ear just prior to the ambulance bothering to turn up, thankfully. But getting to the original point, I actually felt bad for the poor thing. Because, I mean, it, it wasn't trying to attack me or anything like that. It just happened to fly into my hair and decided that my ear cavity was an interesting place to go crawling. So... Yeah, but dear God, painful. Really. Painful and crippling. I think that's the other. It's just the crippling aspect. Like, you can have something painful b biting on your leg or you know, on your arm or yeah, all sorts of places. But when those critters get into your ear, it's just 
your brain literally starts to go off. Well, okay, not literally. I was complaining about the excessive use of that word. Your brain feels like it's going to go on fire just because of the panic that you start to experience. Okay, I guess we'll green goo that too. Yeah, it really is nightmare fuel. That's a good term for it. Nightmare fuel. If you want to torture someone, don't bother with the old you know, nail pulling or anything like that. Just stick something that's going to go into the ear, into the eardrum, and it will work. And best of all, there's no bruises. Yes, um, I have heard that statistic that you tend to consume a spider every six months or so, something like that. I don't know exactly what it was, but yes, I have heard that statistic. And there is the other statistic that there's always a spider within a couple of, uh, within a meter of you. I definitely believe that. And certainly around here it is. It's more like every 10 centimeters. Uh, no, the quick doesn't have controls on the wand. Um, did I miss that somehow? Did someone, did I miss a comment there? Yeah, I would love a burrito from Lewis. Unfortunately, there's no real good burrito places around here. Hell, I doubt there's even any burrito places. Uh, I'm just trying to clean up my tweezers right now because I left the leaded paste on them from last night's adventures with the CD3215. Lewis the Bastard still hasn't replied to my comments in private chat. He is so busy that he will make a comment and you'll go back and reply within like 10 seconds. It's too late. He's gone. Off to do his own little things. The guy is profoundly busy. I mean, saying busy is an understatement in his life. Alright. Let's get some green goo on this. I go out of my way to save spiders that venture into the tub. You need to have a... Um, you need a spider ladder and a moth ladder in your tub. Uh, IT crowd people will know about that. Let's go. Where's my surgical knife? Not my surgical knife, my X Acto knife. <laughs> uh, Aussie spiders aren't I mean, you've you got the red back, you've got the funnel web, and some of the trap spiders, or mouse spiders. But overall, they're, they're just more creepy than anything else. Like, if you get the whopping great big uh, huntsman, like, I'll get a. I've had huntsmans in the shed that are almost the size of my hand. Like, yeah, sort of up to about the first row of knuckles. And they don't bite me or anything like that, but you know, if you do get caught off guard when you're just fishing around in a box somewhere looking for something and you have this whopping great big huntsman appear in your face or on your hand, yeah, you definitely do react in a very typical sort of manner. You squeal, you shake your hand, you run around, panic. Uh, and it's just the sort of behavior that makes the spiders then crap their pants and they're all like, oh my god, I'm gonna get eaten by this huge human being, I'm gonna defend myself, and then chomp. <laughs> and I have damn well damaged my USB connector on my um, UV lamp. can't believe that. Is there no end to the number of things I have to fix just to do stuff around here?
Okay, it looks good enough. Let's see if it wrecks my Apple charger. Okay. All right, leave that under there for a minute while we sit back and um, I think I can. These gloves are getting all soaked up now. Huntsman's like hugs, yeah, they sure do. Hugging your face like an alien face hugger. Uh, but yeah, it's it's predominantly funnel webs are the lethal. Redbacks are lethal if you're a little bit um, weak or yeah, you compromised health-wise and stuff like that, or you're a kid. Mouse spiders, they can cause complications. They're kind of like funnel webs. They're a little bit chunkier, sort of like a cross between a funnel web and a... Um, What's, what are the spiders I'm thinking of? Tarantula. But for the most part, if there was something that you have to be cautious about, certainly snakes in Australia are the bigger issue because pretty much no matter where you go, there are venomous snakes. And a lot of things like the eastern brown, they tend to be in areas that are populated by humans because they tend to like rodents. And so humans create environments that are good for rodents. So the snakes obviously come along. Plus, of course, we're constantly eating into their territory. So, you know, well, let's clear this block and put a new house on it. Whoops, sorry about that snake. Bugger off. And, of course, the snake comes back and wants its food. Yeah, got caught under the chair. That's right, Kristen. Hey, Corvorus. Oh, what did I say Corvorus for? Sorry. Corvus. Whitetails... Um, brown recluse, things like that. We don't really get that. I mean, there are certainly some instances of um, neuro, you know, neuro necrosis occurring. Most of that, I believe, tends to come from the actual bacteria as opposed to the venom. Um, we don't really have cytotoxic creatures in this country. Certainly in South Africa, you know, the puffers and whatnot, they'll... They put a bite into you and then yeah, you may as well just lop off whatever part they, they bit because it will just rot away with the cytotoxin. Like um, last night I retrieved two snakes from the backyard and that they were just little blind snakes. They ran about so like that long. They're really like more dexterous worms. Uh, blind and they feed off termites so but the cats tend to get them and they do seem because they're so small they can get in through the enclosure protection barriers fortunately they're fine they're not a big issue we do also then get moon snakes which are quite nice to look at but they're weakly venomous they're disinclined to fight but again i don't like the cats getting to them we had a scare the other night we had a carpenteria snake come in which is a very uh, recluse type snake. It really doesn't put itself in a place where you can normally find it. They're around, but I've only seen two in the last 15 years, so they're very difficult to come across. They're unfortunately quite venomous to pets. Unfortunately, also, there's no anti-venom. Um, so it's a I find them a little more concerning when the cats get them. Fortunately, like I said, only two in the last 15 years. Because if they get bitten, there's just nothing you can do. So you can try and manage the symptoms, but it's the things like renal damage and stuff like that that end up getting the poor animal. Okay, that's all nicely cured. For the most part, so long as you keep your yard clear and you know avoid having things that the snakes want to eat in your yard, like rodents and stuff, then you should be good. That's pretty much the what it comes down to. I'm pretty happy with how that fillet went. Sometimes the UV cure doesn't sort of end up sitting nicely; it just doesn't seem to sit right. But that one's nice. So I'm happy with that. All right, so that's it. That one's done. I'm happy. I was really starting to worry there for a bit that we're going to have some issue with the PCH or whatever, as weird as it was. So I'm very glad that we ended up going back and checking that connector with the tweezers to see if any of the pins were loose. And we got it freakishly lucky. Uh, well, 
All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. What is the time now? Midday, 11, yeah, 12.30. I'm going to go get my coffee, that one that I wanted earlier. That, I will say, is the way that I regulate my coffee consumption. See, now, if you had a pot of coffee or a constant cup in front of me, I'd probably drink way too much. But fortunately, my procrastination is a natural enemy to my coffee consumption. So even if I want lots of coffee, I'll usually procrastinate or get distracted or stuff like that, and I'll still end up at around about three a day, thankfully. Seen a five meter long red belly. That's pretty damn massive. The biggest things we get around here are um, scrub pythons. They're the ones that will take the crocs and stuff like that. Um, thankfully, they're nowhere near as big as the anaconda type things you find over in Indonesia. That's just crazy what they get over there. So, all right leave it at that thank you all for sitting around and um go abuse lewis and give him my kind of love i really appreciate it remember to like subscribe share all that sort of trash now i've got to try and be a professional youtuber here apparently i've exceeded 500 videos now and i'm sitting at 15,000 subscribers which is damn good proof this is an excellent uh, data point that having lots of videos doesn't do squat for you better off to produce quality content I'll work on that. But in the meantime, you're just going to put up with lots of videos of average quality from me. Until then, you'll take care. I'll see you later.